We've set this time apart in the assembly to remember Christ. And during this time we remember how Christ died for the sins of mankind. But let us not misunderstand that to mean Christ is dead. That's not what we remember at the Lord's table. But what if that were the end, so to speak? If that were the end, Christ died, that's where you put the period. And I feel some... Kind of like that when they speak about salvation of mankind, they kind of add that period too early. They kind of go through the life of Christ, his birth. They look through his miracles, the wonderful works he did in the earth, the people that he healed, the people that he ministered to, fellowshiped with, led, revealed things to. And then when they get to the cross, that part where he gave up the ghosts, and then they close the book and they say the end. That's a mistake. Now, what if that were the end right there? What if there was no resurrection? And I'm sure you're going to know what chapter I'm speaking of now that I mention that. It's uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Anyone who knows 1 Corinthians, when you mention chapter 15, you're thinking about the resurrection. And in verse 12, he mentions that Christ has been preached to these people, that he's rose from the dead. But yet some people are saying, it's like, well, there is no resurrection of the dead. And then he follows with this argument. So let's just start. What if that was it? Jesus died and that's it. Starting at verse 14, 1 Corinthians 15. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Already off to a rocky start. And your faith is also vain. Yea, we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Oh, don't add that period so early. I find necessary when we speak about how Christ died for the sins of mankind that we don't just leave it at that. He did not stay dead. Because if he did stay dead, you're still dead. The scripture I cite to you just showed that if Christ just died, everything we're doing now... Is all done in vain. It's all for nothing. A dead Christ cannot mediate for us. A dead Christ cannot make our requests made known to God. A dead Christ cannot intercede in our behalf. A dead Christ cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. A dead Christ cannot be given power and authority over all flesh. A dead Christ cannot be given a name above every name. A dead Christ cannot go and prepare a place for us so that we may be where he is. A dead Christ cannot make his abode in us. A dead Christ cannot return and reward every man according to his works. A dead Christ does not offer eternal life. All of this requires Christ to be alive. Although when in removal of sins, that required a dead Christ. Now, the Lord's table is by no means a place for lamentation or sorrow, like a funeral, so to speak. If Christ were not raised from the dead, then surely this would be a time for misery and grief. Our Savior is dead. He was here. He, he, he did so many mighty works. He made so many promises, and now he's gone. That's all we would have to remember at the Lord's table. And we, there would be, there, all we would do is grieve and weep. But the Lord's table is no such place for this. This is a pl- like, okay... You may recall like people that go to the graves of loved ones, you know, that they've lost long ago for the sake of remembering things they might have heard. Maybe that person impacted them somewhere. They go and they visit their grave and they weep. Well, when you go to Jesus' tomb, you won't find him in there. Even though that's not what the people expected at first. When Mary went to the tomb, she expected to see a body in there. And according to John's account, when the body was missing, the, what's the first thing that enters her mind? Not that, oh, Christ is back from the dead. No, someone stole the body. Simon Peter, they call people over, look, someone stole the body. And they come and look, and they go back home, and then after that, she's still weeping. And the angels are there. The angels are there. Why are you weeping? She's like, someone stole the body. We don't know. I don't know where it is. That's when they bring this good news. He's not dead. He's raised from the dead. We do not, like, remember Christ in the sense that we remember a martyr, a brave leader who died for a noble cause. The Lord's table is a place for rejoicing. Because the place we can remember and focus on how the will of God was accomplished Amen. in Him. Our sins being removed required Christ to die. With that being the case, we are glad He was able to complete that work God had given Him. We are thankful that He gave Himself a ransom for all, and that He suffered the penalty for all sin in our stead so that we would be saved from the wrath of God. 
However, we will also give all the more thanks that death does not have dominion over him any longer. We take joy in remembering that he was raised for our justification, and that we are not still dead in our sins, and that he does intercede, mediate, rule, and care for us. He is now able to feed us and help us grow now that he's alive. Faith cannot grow if the author and finisher of faith is not present. The body cannot function without its head. We cannot reach our destination without our captain and our leader. Don't forget, in Romans chapter 5, and verse 9, being justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. What's the next verse say? If, if much more than being reconciled by his death, how much more shall we then, being reconciled, be saved by his life? That's that resurrected Christ that we're talking about. Christ had to die for sins to be removed. His death, however, is only a part of the process of salvation. Christ offers eternal life to us. He said he goes to prepare a place for us. It says that he will come again and take us to himself. What good are such promises if Christ is still dead? What good is any of that? The gospel message. And you might read a little further in 1 Corinthians 15. Let me read that real quick. Where it says, If in this life we have hope... In Christ, if this life only we have hope in Christ, then we are of all men most miserable. That would mean we would be the most miserable people in the world. We would be the most pitied, the most, the ones that would suffer the greatest loss. The things that Jesus promised, the eternal life, the things that would come in the kingdom, all that would just go away in his death. Because the things that he promised testified that he would come back from the dead. Right. And didn't he just say, didn't he say that you destroy this temple in three days, it's going right. to come, come back up. That means nothing if Christ isn't risen. So, even in the sense of lamentation, if you were lamenting, if this was all it is, if Christ just died and we came to the Lord's table, we would be lamenting, but that adds more to the table. Why would we be lamenting if Christ just died? Would it be because, like we were talking, like we remembering a good martyr? No, we're remembering a fraud, an imposter. Someone who was not who he said he was. That's what we would be remembering. Everything we believed, it would be a big joke. Because Jesus didn't show himself to be someone who was just going to die. He revealed himself as someone who was going to die for our sins. He was going to take the sins, but he also said, I'm coming back. And I'm going to do more after I die. And I'm going to keep working until you are brought safely into the, into the kingdom. And so, well, you can read the good news here. It says, 1 Corinthians 15, And now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in, all, in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now that's much more encouraging to read than that first part. But that's based on the argument, if he's not raised, if. Not that he's not, he is. But if that were the case, that's what we would have. But we have no such, we, we, we do not come here to mourn and grieve and share dep and have depression. We have, this is a time where we have more joy. We would be most miserable if Christ wasn't raised. But now because he is raised, we're the, quite the opposite. We're the happiest of people. We're the most, strong, we're the most strengthened. The mo we have the strongest hope, greater hope than anybody because we serve a risen Christ. So that being said, let's not leave Jesus on the cross, but let's remember the tomb is empty, and he's come back from the dead, and he's still working and interceding on our behalf. Let's now pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray.